Hey guys, welcome Eric Roberts. This is Worship Band Builder, Worship the King, and today I'm diving into Logic Pro X and the live mix. I'm going to show you my template, which I'm really excited about. Actually, I'm overexcited about this. Uh, and check it out. So here it is, and I'm going to show you this is what we did last week, and I'm going to show you how I mixed it. I'm going to move stuff around so you can see it. I'm going to make my head smaller, smaller. There you go. You don't care about seeing my face anyway, right? So this was our first week at the church at Spring Hill to mix live through logic and it went well you know it went good and i recorded just a few little segments so i could show you uh, as you know so i could listen to them behind and so i could show you uh, the hotkey x on logic gives you uh, your mixer so your mixer pops right up here that's very easy to see and um, this is what we have so let's take a listen to it uh, and i'll show you what i did with it here's here's what i what i did and here's uh, what you can hear Now, obviously, okay, so that's, that's what we have. The cool part about this is, number one, you get to see what my template looks like, what I'm doing. Well, it's not doing a ton, uh, but for some of you guys who are newer at this, you're like, oh, yeah, that's that's what you want to do. And then also, I can solo out and listen to these parts. So this this part of why I hit record a few times, so I just could go back and listen. Um, First of all, this is what we have, a bass, snare, and overhead. So on our drums, we just have a bass drum mic, we have an overhead mic, and we have a snare mic. And so we can listen to those right now. Uh, let's listen. I haven't done this yet. This is me getting to do this for the first time. I'll pop back here and listen. Uh, let's see, I'll take that off and listen back here. The overheads on our drum set sound really good, by the way. So let's see, where are we at here? Give me something. And okay, so that's that's that. Let's listen to that in the mix. So that you done for me. Okay, good. So basically over here, all I have is I have a little bit, I have a bus one mix set up. So I set up a bus one mix. I set up my main reverb to be this chroma verb thing right here. And I, I, I haven't used Logic in quite a while, so I'm, I'll, I'll find some good plugins, but I just threw a chroma verb on, on this um, bus. And then anytime I wanted to add a little bit of reverb, I put it right here in bus one. So I've got reverb on Rob's vocals, worship leader, on the backup singer. I've got a little bit on the acoustic, just a little bit, a little compressor on, and then on the bass drum and the snare drum, a little bit of reverb. And I thought it sounded pretty good in the mix. So. The other thing that I did this for, the little quick recordings, is because I think that I can actually now listen to the snare. I can EQ it a little bit. I can tweak it. When I go back for next week and I load this in, then those will all be applied. So it's kind of hard to hear in the room, and it's everything's going, moving kind of fast. I'm going to have a ton of time to tell everybody to sit there and play their snare drum for two minutes while I EQ'd it. This is We've been moving pretty fast. So uh, let's see. Let's check this out. Let's uh, Let's find another piece of this and talk about that. So we use up track. That's where you hear. That's what you hear here. I, I recommend doing this anytime. It gives you like a little bit of. And here's April, I believe. Oh, that's right. That's right. I, I recorded her, but. Um, Okay, so she's singing this, and I recorded a couple other versions of her singing this. And, you know, I think I don't really, I'm not quite sure I understand in Logic how to tell it to, uh, 
how to basically how to basically keep this one here. It's like, I don't want to delete that, but I, th I think I deleted her vocals on that part, unfortunately. So let's see what we got here. Okay, good. So I'll figure out how to use Logic here in a minute. Um, I basically, I figure I got the wrong, um, well, I deleted her vocals here. Well, are they, are they here? No, they're here. I deleted, I thought I deleted her vocals there. So let's see here. Let's turn the, uh, so she's, yeah, I've got her turned off for some reason. Let's see if she's... There we go. So I did some overdubbing with April so I could mix her vocal, and I didn't realize I could really just solo her out and, and EQ her. But I, I put a little EQ on her. Now check this EQ out. I had to really boost her EQ, like a ton, to get it to sound like anything. It was sounding really muddy. King of glory, the king of Listen to the bass. I just want to listen to the bass. The bass was giving us the most trouble, and it was like soft and then loud, soft and then loud. See, I don't know what this is like. This right here. You feel like it's kind of soft there, and then he kind of. And then he kind of plays louder, so I gotta figure out how to. Yeah, there it is. He's kind of pushing. Let's see. The snare's kind of a. Uh... Oh wow. See, I think I've got myself record enabled. I gotta turn this off. There we go. Okay. So anyway, I've got all kinds of audio stuff going on in my head, and I'm like, what is happening? But what I have here is basically, um, I think it's because if I turn this on, yeah, you can hear me through there, um, because this input is thinking that it's me. Uh, hopefully, you guys don't hear that. Um, let's see. If I do this, and it comes in there. All right, so basically, I've got everything sounding pretty pretty good. It's a good start. This, this is all a very good start, and this is the template that I'm using. Very basic stuff. Uh, a little compressor here and there, a little EQ here and there, and each week, I'm going to develop this uh, template, and probably over the next several months, it will become very solid template to where we really understand what sounds good, whose who's mic sounds great, whose mic needs tweaked. Um, it's like if you were going into the studio and um, and you were actually going into a studio. I'm going to turn this record. I don't know why this is acting like it's record enabled. But if you were going into the studio and you were um, going to mix, you would mix for hours on like one song or days or weeks or however long it takes. When you're in a live scenario, you're, you're having to do that within within an hour. And it all happens very, very quick. Okay, so you should be at practice doing this, and then we should be like, I'm in the studio listening and tweaking. So this doesn't, I guess my point of this is setting this up, it doesn't just take like, oh, five minutes, we're gonna set this up and plug this in and turn it on and then it goes. That, that's not gonna happen. Um, what's gonna happen is uh, it's gonna take hours and hours and hours and days and days and weeks and months. And then maybe after a while, you're gonna go like, wow, I finally got this sounding really good. 
uh, and then you know and then you might want to go to the next level then and say okay well how can we make it even better so if you're getting ready to embark on live streaming this has just been hours and hours and hours and days and days and days and weeks of tweaking and figuring out what's working and and we're getting closer and closer every time and that's what i really like our team because the whole point is we didn't we didn't have all the equipment up front we didn't have everything we just moved into a new building everything's kind of up in the air and the whole point is every week we're getting a little better and i feel like every week we have got a little better and gotten a little better even when we have to switch equipment so we had to switch into logic this week the mix didn't get a ton better but the process got a little better so we're going to take little wins along the way the reason why, uh, again, that we want this process to have logic mixing for the live stream so that you can train somebody and work on a template that sounds good and you can turn it on and it works while somebody else is mixing for the room. Um, trying to mix your live stream long term off an aux or a bus um, is not flexible enough. It's not, uh, it's not a thing that you can actually do over and over with, with high consistency. I did a few good weeks of it and I uh, thought it was pretty good. And so you can achieve a pretty good mix. I mean, if you don't have logic or if you're not ready for that, I, we achieved some pretty good mixes, I thought, off, off just that scenario where I was mixing off a of bus eight. It was a lot harder, it took a, little, a lot more effort. I think a little more skill, like a little more split brain skill to be able to go back and forth. I wouldn't want to do that every week because it just felt like um, being able to focus on the live mix completely, knowing that what I hear and I'm tweaking like little things as we go, that's what's coming out to the people is much safer than just you know throwing a bus mix up and hoping that it sounds good in the end. And it can sound okay doing that. It, sounds, it sounded okay for us, but it can sound a lot better and um, we can train better for it too. We can train people on the systems that we have in place, which is key to, for longevity, training each person to do each part and then the whole thing works together. That's really part of the key of making this even better uh, for, for our church as we go into this live stream. So, um, all right, this is part of the journey. This is, uh, th that was, uh, all that was for July 30th and we're gonna keep going. All right, let me know if you have any questions or if you'd like uh, any comments, put them right down there. Go to worshipbandbuilder.com if you wanna learn more. If you want to uh, get involved in some of the training programs that, that I'm creating as I'm doing this for our church and some of the foundations things as well. All right. Blessings.